Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. It's really great for me to be a attendee as well as a participant and a speaker. So my name is Olivia Lee, and I'm thrilled to tell you about something that intrigues me greatly. And that is the idea of metahumans, or more commonly known as avatars, or even more specifically for today, it's, it is digital influencers. So I'm particularly interested in knowing how humans embodying their digital alter ego as the next evolution of social media influencers and how it will impact the digital realm, the fashion space, in real life and in society. So during this talk, I'm going to share my story on how I became a metaverse explorer my journey as an avatar influencer in the making and share my insights on how I see influencers evolving the Web3 landscape. So I'll also briefly talk about some business models and dive into the societal impact of influencers and uncover the potential of sustainability in the realm of digital fashion. It's all pretty exciting if you ask me, so let's start. So I'd like to tell a little bit more about myself, my business, and my role in Web3. I'm the co-founder of Livium. It's a Web3 consultancy, and our mission here at Livium is to navigate brands as they charter their uncharted waters of the metaverse. So we focus on ideation and economy design. I like to think of this as the first step for any brand to get into the Web3 or the metaverse, especially exploring the potential while weaving the existing business models. So many brands that consider jumping in and they may not know how or more importantly, why. So this is where Livian can come in with recommendation and overview of their existing business goal. So my journey into this space started out for a deep rooted passion for the intersection of fashion, technology and marketing. Web3 to me is the next iteration of the internet. So this fascination led me to understanding on and working with Web3 entities as well as traditional brands in fashion, beauty and lifestyle. So a little bit more about my background. In 2015, I launched one of the first online magazine that embraced rich media, immersive videos, and interactive animations. So imagine you can click and buy directly from the magazine. The magazine was not just a platform for fashion content, but also a statement against fashion waste. So at the time, in 2015, it was also the rise of social influencers, and that really changed the landscape of marketing as well. The magazine became a launchpad uh, for several of today's top influencers. We featured them on our covers, we interviewed them, we showcased their unique style, and of course, sporting pre-loved clothing. So it was through the use of social media marketing and the power of these influencers that the magazine was well loved and read by fans in over 30 and more countries. So the fusion of influencers, fashion, sustainability and marketing is not just my area of expertise, but it truly is my passion. So a little bit about me as a metaverse explorer. So as a metaverse explorer, I've explored over 20 and more platforms and over 50 and more worlds. So how I define brand activation of defined worlds are that they are brand activations, either temporary or permanent. So I started jumping in about 11 months ago because originally I was constantly asking myself, why would a brand such as Gucci or even McDonald's decide to build on the sandbox and not on other platforms? And why would a user such as myself who may not have any gaming experience would want to try? And even more importantly, why would I want to go back again and again? So also, I had a really interesting experience earlier this year. It was unique, strange, and exhilarating, where I was directed completely in the central land, where I took part in the filming of a K-pop music cover. So while preparing for this debut, I started to wonder about the paradigm shift that's foreseeable in the world of influencers, human versus digital. 
So overall, my own experience is an indication of the potential for digital influencers for both creators and brands. So I always like to start with how did we get here? I use the idea of Web 1 to Web 3 to really highlight that all of these changes that we are seeing really is not that intimidating. So on the topic of influencers, in the early days of fashion advertising and before the internet, models were often anonymous beauties who wore the clothes and embodied the image the brand wanted to project. They were seen but not known, lending their allure to the products they promoted. The rise of the supermodels in the 90s changed the game significantly, where models also became celebrities in their own right. So the birth of the influencers before the term came about was already happening in the 90s. So with Web2, I really like to think that it was the introduction of the smartphone that really spurred Web2. With the rise of all these new social media platforms such as Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok, we really saw the democratization of influence. So anyone, you and I, can become a KOL or a micro-influencer. As long as we're equipped with nothing more than a smartphone, a great ring light, internet connection, we can all become influencers, but it's still not that easy. It really does require a unique voice, understanding your audience, and you must have creativity and also consistency. So those that are making millions or amass millions of followers likely really treat it as a full-time role. So influencers created content around various niches, fashion, beauty, fitness, food, travel, and more. And their influence reached corners the traditional advertisers couldn't. This changed the branding landscape and the beginning of something called UGC, user-generated content. Recognizing the power of these influencer brands, they began incorporating influencer marketing into their strategies and leading to the creation of an entire industry around social media influence. Of course, it also gave brands new ways to measure, so like their KPIs, such as impressions, unique visitors, and engagement became common measures of success. So influencers became integral part of marketing strategy, primarily because they offer a more relatable and trustworthy alternative to traditional celebrities. So at this moment, it is common to see influencers become brand ambassadors, just like we'd see celebrities as well. So influencers monetize their influence in several ways. They sign brand partnerships and sponsorship deals where they were paid to promote products and services. They also use affiliate marketing where they earn a commission for sales made using their unique code. So some influencers of course launch their own product line and they offer paid services such as online courses or subscription and consultation. So with the rise of platforms, that facilitate these form of monetizations, influencers found themselves at the helm of a very profitable business. So in, as popularity of these influencers grow, so did the impact on society. They have effectively democratized access to fashion, beauty, and lifestyle content. They gave a floor platform to niche products and individuals who previously had no voice in traditional media. Yet this culture of influencer has a darker side. Influencers of, often showcase a continuous stream of new products and clothing and lifestyle goods, which also drive followers to engage in constant consumption. This behavior, coupled with the rise of fast fashion, has led to some serious environmental implications due to the waste generated and resources used in fast fashion production. Even myself, since starting and going on to Instagram, I find myself buying a lot more items that I otherwise would not have bought if I just went to my one or two favorite online stores. So today we stand on the precipice of a new era, the era of digital influencers in the metaverse. 
So virtual beings, which can be also powered by AI and brought to life by blockchain technology are starting to take center stage. In this new world, these digital entities are not only influencing trends, but they are redefining the concept of influence itself. Influence takes on a whole new dimension, is no longer just people. They are digital entities, AI-driven virtual beings that inhabit these worlds. Humans embodying their digital avatar can interact with fans, host virtual events, or even sell digital goods. It is truly reshaping our understanding of what it means to be an influencer. So the rise of digital influencers is also giving birth to exciting new business models. So you can consider things like avatar agencies. These are akin to talent agencies to digital influencers, like managing their portfolio and handling collaborations. Then we also have businesses that's going to be specializing in creating digital fashion and accessories for these influencers. Another interesting model would be the idea of tokenization, where fans can buy tokens associated with various benefits. So let's not also forget that even the IP, service and handling rights and licensing for these influencers. We're really witnessing the dawn of an entirely new economy driven by these influencers. So one of the most promising aspects of influencers and virtual fashion is the potential for sustainability. So by reducing the need for physical products, promoting reusability and fostering a more circular economy, we have an unprecedented opportunity to redefine fashion and influence in a more sustainable way. So for example, in a real life context, imagine that for a social media influencer where it's so vital to be creative, to be always sharing new content in the form of pictures or videos and on a regular basis, and especially they cannot be seen wearing something twice. They can use AR filters or digital fashion impose on their photos to engage with their followers. I believe it still shares a very compelling story. And in fact, it would increase the novelty and wow factor of their posts. So in the end for social media influencers and future digital influencers, it's really about getting the likes and adding that sense of novelty. And I feel like this is gonna be a great solution once it becomes more normalized. So again, instead of sending items to an influencer that she may only wear once, put aside, or even worse, she can throw it away. Brands can drop filters um, and brands can also impose these digital items such as clothing or accessory onto the image. And then at a later date, they may even be able to sell it on secondary or even the original creator or owner may benefit from the sale. So as I shared earlier, my own experience using my digital avatar was quite interesting where I experienced firsthand how this could work. So earlier this year in around January, I was invited by one of my favorite digital fashion brands, Brand New Vision to join in their uh, K-pop music video, uh, totally filmed and covered in the central land. So I really had to consider what I was gonna wear so I went to another brand that I really participate in the community, Diversion, and I asked them if I can borrow one of their jumpsuits. And they so kindly dropped me their Lilu jumpsuit to my wallet and also the matching purse. And at the same time, Brand New Vision also sent me their mask that I'm wearing in red there and also an emote, which is an integral part of this K-pop music video. So once I was done filming, I found it so easy to return that item by a click of a button. So I really find that this can really change how we can be accepting items when we need to make a post as a digital influencer. So the rise of Web3 presents an array of exciting possibilities for influencers, creators, and brands. Creators will have more ownership and control over their content by distributing and monetizing their work without relying on centralized platforms. Smart contract can streamline collaborations and ensure transparency. 
So DAO can also allow for community-driven decision-making, enabling followers to have a say in the influencer's content creation process or brand partnership. The future of influencer in the Web3 era is an open canvas, and that is only just the beginning. So thank you so much for joining me today. And I really look forward to connecting all with all of you. And you can find me on LinkedIn. Thank you.